Start now. Okay, bit quiet, please. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Hello, welcome to this uh, short pitch movement one. We're doing an emergency escape device, which will consist of uh, some kind of whales we will mount outside the buildings. And then we'll uh, make some kind of uh, friction device where uh, people can attach themselves in harnesses and then slide down from this building uh, safe and quickly. Um, we're also going to make some, some kind of uh, lift which we can uh, mount in a yeah, we can mount in this rails and use for maintenance and uh, window cleaning. Uh, we think we can sell this product as a product service system where we as a company can, uh, can sell education and, uh, and uh, make, uh, make drills so people can use the system safely. Um, we can ensure a higher safety uh, for staff and owners and uh, potentially we can, uh, we can lower the insurance costs. For, uh, for the building's owners and their, therefore um, uh, ensure some, uh, some, some kind of uh, higher um, safety for this, um, higher ratings for this, uh, this building. And we, will, uh, we, we uh, think that uh, develop, uh, by using the system in uh, new developments, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can replace uh, one emergency staircase and use uh, more space at each floor for more practical purposes. We have uh, investigated the market in uh, Denmark and uh, in Europe and uh, there are not so many uh, tall buildings in the Denmark and Europe. So we think we have to go uh, worldwide for this solution right away. Uh, there are over 8,000 buildings uh, over 100 meters tall in worldwide. And um, uh, there are even more uh, tall buildings under 100 meters. Um, this makes this, uh, this market size huge because uh, ladders and fire trucks are only limited to 50 meters. So there are huge potentials for this, uh, this product. And we estimate we can sell to uh, 1 or 2% of these 8,000 buildings, yielding uh, some, far, some kind of 160 um, solutions uh, in the, the first uh, couple, of, couple of years. We have estimated a production cost for 100 meter tall buildings to about 6 million Danish kroners and we'd like to set it for 10 million Danish kroners. We think that it will cost about 3 million per year for developing tests and sales and after 3 years we'll be ready to sell the first solution. About after 7 to 8 years we will break even and thereby for the investor will uh, double the investment after 10 to 11 years. We have to, uh, to convince the owners of these buildings that uh, it's a good idea to buy a product. Uh, it's a safe and uh, good solution. We also have to convince staff uh, or residents to actually use the system, uh, to, uh, to, to use the system in, the, in the fires or earthquakes or uh, general emergencies. We also have to develop a prototype and uh, test the solution and uh, actually test how many people we can get down safely in a short period of time. Uh, we also need to find investors and business partners and we have the, been in contact with the uh, Danish Fire and Security <coughs> Institute, uh, which is a company who's, uh, who specializes in, uh, in consulting uh, in security for tall buildings. And we think by using them as a business partner, we can use some of their know-how and uh, their, their expertise to, uh, to sell and uh, counsel this, uh, this solution. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> First question there. Uh, have you come to the point where you have actually contacted some of the building owners or investors? Or and heard their opinion about it, because in my mind, I think your largest challenge is this is a political work. And I guess you should need at the EU level. I don't think anybody will put this cost on it, it's not linked to the situation. Um, we researched some of the rules for uh, this um, emergency escapes. Right now there really aren't so many rules. You just have to save the people, so it's 
it's not, yeah, there's not too many rules about the, the, the escape systems. But I guess the rule that you need to have fire escapes and you need to have a second. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, there are some rules and there are some political works that has been done yeah. once upon a time at, in history. At first, we would also retrofit the system to existing buildings, so we couldn't, uh, we can't just, just aim for a new building, so the system about replacing a second fire escape will not be uh, something we'll look into uh, at first. No. Uh, you say that uh, Denmark is not really your potential market, um, but you could adjust your system. I know that uh, you say that it's something about height, and, uh, but you could adjust it to the Danish market also, but, and also to, uh, to include that, uh, I think it was one year ago, there was a young Pulitzer Prize winners uh, from Odense, uh, some girls who made the solution with a stair that was under the wall. Uh, that so we can reach the thing was seventh floor and get down by a stair. And that uh, was really good idea. Have you looked into that? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I don't think any of us have heard about that uh, that idea actually. And uh, the reason we're we're looking beyond Denmark is that. The tallest building in Denmark is uh, the hospital in Harlow, and it's around 140 meters or so. And the, the market isn't that big because a lot of buildings in Denmark is tall enough for, uh, for fire trucks to reach with, reach with their ladders. So we think it's a, it's a better opportunity to, to go out in Europe or in the world and uh, try to, to make it for some of those buildings than rather small market in Denmark. Okay. That's the reason why. So perhaps if you just pass on that, um, yeah. uh, that project yeah. information. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I have a bit of a hard time figuring out what exactly your product is. Um, what does it look like and what does yeah. it do? You say it's, it escape, people can escape. And uh, something with cleaning windows. Yeah, we will. Yeah, what's happening? We will mount rails on the side of the building. Uh, like uh, the profile will be something like this. And yeah, it will not be bigger than maybe uh, 100 millimeters or something uh, wide. And you will have, for window cleaning, you will have several. So you will have a, a system with the rail uh, inside several of these uh, yeah, rails. Are, but if you, you have to escape the building uh, from a fire or something else, you will have a harness which will be mounted with some friction between the sides connected and you will hang outside here with, with a, a climbing harness on and you will, uh, yeah, by the friction, go down so it will be a purely mechanical uh, system, so. Yeah, and almost invisible from the outside. Yeah, yeah, you will only, only have, have uh, this rail, so. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, in uh, retrospect to the invisible, you need to, to also make some uh, collaboration with the architects and so because you don't want to pick some uh, make some big ugly things that uh, ruin the architecture of the building, so. The back there. Um, I was just wondering if this, if it was me, I would, I would, maybe I would just jump out of the building to try this because it seems uh, you need to be a daredevil to dare to save this way. I was just wondering, have you thought about going into maybe another market where people are a bit more fearless or still needs to be safe from heights? I was thinking maybe offshore where they do a lot of safety drills and stuff like that. Yeah, we also said that we, we might need to do some drills and uh, testing uh, and teach people how to use it so uh, everybody would use it if there was an emergency. So that's, okay. we, we would have to do some drills for the people <coughs> who would use it. Is there a question at the back? There is uh, some architectural uh, challenges to overcome, but in our opinion, is this, it is possible in a large amount of buildings to make this pretty much invisible, uh, so that you won't ruin uh, the architectural uh, structure of the building. Um. I'll take one more question. Sorry, I'm not ignoring the people with their hands up. I'm trying to make sure everybody 
hear ask a question at some point. Um, we'll go this gentleman. Sorry. Uh, your market model, is it based on, on purely sales or do you have a, a product service system uh, to, to maintain or certify the ladders every year? Um, yeah, the, the idea is that we, first of all, we, we sell this system to make the building uh, have a better grade of uh, secure, uh, safety. And after this, we can service uh, both the rails and we can also sell uh, maintenance of the outside of the building. Uh, we design uh, these carts for uh, uh, for window cleaning, so we can uh, raise and lower on the outside of the building uh, and, and therefore earn some money as well. Uh, furthermore, there is uh, education of uh, people using the system, uh, residents or uh, yeah, people working in offices and so on, uh, and we would like to sell that as well. Okay, Jakob? Yeah, um, one, uh, one question. I think uh, kudos on the fact that you actually have some, uh, some, uh, some financial figures in there, uh, some, uh, some uh, investment propositions. Uh, I, just, uh, I, I think I'd like to hear a little bit more, more about how you've estimated the cost of your product. And mm -hmm. uh, in that same sentence, uh, how you come to uh, a payback of uh, seven to eight years and then uh, double on the investment with, I think you said, 11 or 12 years or something like that. Just put a few words on that, please. Yeah, the costs for the system, we purely estimated from uh, what we could find on the internet for uh, prices of uh, steel, metal, and uh, okay. stainless steel, and uh, also uh, production cost. And, uh, so I think we made a a pretty uh, yeah yeah rough estimate. It's That's it's fine. a rough That's estimate. Fine. So, but it yeah and and we would say after we developed the first system, we would sell one system every year mm -hmm. uh, for these ten ten million uh, Danish kroners, and that would uh, result in in the figures we we posted out there, okay. and and we estimated it would take three million a year for an investor to develop the system with five engineers uh, working on it. Okay. What about fitting the system? To yeah, yeah. Building? We uh, also put that in the in the price. Uh, the, yeah, to mount the system on the on the buildings. We we made an uh, estimate of uh, how much it would cost per per meter of material and mounting and and so on, and then scaled it up to 100 meters and taking into account how many people were in a building like this for for how many harnesses we needed, and that's the. The, the way we came up to the, the roughly six million. Okay. Um, relating back right to one of the first questions um, regarding the cost, who pays for it? Why would they? Why would they pay for this? Of course, it's it's very good for the people in the building, but why would the building owner want to pay? Um, if. Uh, as said, if you could lower the insurance for the building, uh, so so they could save money in the in the long run, uh, that could be a, a good argument. And also, if uh, we have to um, to do do some research in in if you have uh, if this could replace an existing uh, fire escape, then you would also have uh, more space inside the building. That would also be yeah more room for you to sell. Uh, sell. So they've they've got to save at least. 10 million yeah. uh, krona in a yeah. foreseeable time range of, I, I'd say, seven years or so. Uh, yeah, for a building owner or... Yeah, or, uh, yeah, yeah. To, make, to make the money back, otherwise yeah. they, they wouldn't be interested. Do you think that's feasible? Um, yeah, I would say it, it could be feasible, but okay. right now we don't know how much it costs to, uh, in, uh, to have insurance on a, on a tall building, so... Think about it that you remove a staircase uh, that gives them some room for 100 storage that would give a, a lot of of uh, square meters to rent out more that would generate a okay, additional good point. I'm not sure I forgot that point. Yeah. yeah. Um, can we have uh, group nine down to the front um, to load up quickly? We'll have one more question. Jack, have, yeah, have you got another? I, um, There's one from the floor if not. Yeah, I, I think I, I did have one. It just uh, I think uh, you have some interesting factors with regards to you know the insurance and also uh, with the, the roof space. Uh, sorry, the the floor space that you sort of free up. Uh, how are you going to proceed with uh, validating those assumptions and, uh, and things like that? Uh, do you have a plan for who you will talk to? How you will go about that? 
Well, well, uh, uh, I plan us to to talk uh, more with the this uh, what's it called Danish uh, one. Uh, and, uh, and, and companies like the, uh, that uh, who evaluate uh, building uh, security, uh, uh, safety, and, uh, and so on, and try to to find out if it it is a what's it called uh, a plausible way to 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 replace an emergency uh, stair. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, yeah, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, if we can thank the group. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, before we uh, continue, I'd just like to introduce uh, the lady who's just walked into the room. This is uh, Verena Simpson, who works for um, Guardian IP. Uh, she's the, the patent consultant. So she's going to be looking at the rest of the, uh, the presentations from now. Um, and perhaps if you want to catch her in the break, you, she can give you a few words of advice on how you might want to prepare uh, for the patenting lecture in a couple of weeks' time. Um, but for now, are you guys ready? <coughs> yeah. Okay, three, two, one, go. Um, so we are Group 9, and we have this product called Shopify. Yes, uh, yeah, we have made this business proposition for our business idea based on, uh, based on uh, reviews and analysis of the, of the ben benefits, cost, and value that the product can, can deliver to the customers and other constitute groups. Um, so the first part is the background and the potential of the market we will enter. And yeah, due to our reviews and, and researches, there's an increase of use of e-commerce and online shopping every single year. So the market itself is huge and, um, uh, <coughs> and, and increasing. And of course, the competition for our but the online retail marketing is also uh, big. Uh, so therefore, uh, there will be need for some new solution uh, or trend to attract uh, people and customers' demand. So our idea is based on this. And uh, the value proposition, um, the main idea is to, to collect um, uh, shopping um, uh, information uh, from the buyers and the users. Uh, such as personal information, demogra demographics, and, um, and shopping habits, uh, where we after can sell this information to the companies uh, as, a anal as a stat stat statistical analysis. Uh, and moreover, there will also be advertisement uh, on the web page uh, for the companies, of course. Uh, the technology we will be using is an uh, online web-based system um, We'll use Web2 technology to, to, to make this browsing system that will increase the, the user network and thereby inc increase the uh, sale of product for the companies. And also, we will use this technology to connect to Facebook to get uh, personal information. Uh, so how does this product work? Um, let's assume you want to uh, buy something online and you choose the product and you want to take out. Uh, in this phase, you will have two options. You will uh, either take out normally or you will take up through Shopify. And if you take out through Shopify, you will get discount. In this case, save 10%, for instance. And w when you click on Shopify, this pop-up window will appear and it will ask you to uh, log on uh, to your Shopify account. If you already have an account, you just type it in and your personal information will appear. If not, you sign up. And you can either choose to sign up manually or you can just connect through Facebook and your personal information such as age and name, email and so on will be <coughs> listed. Um, once you have your account, you can take out. So in this case, uh, you need to confirm that your uh, purchase will be shared on Facebook and, uh, and on Shopify in order to get discount, of course. Uh, yeah. So if you say agree that on Facebook, it will look like this, as you know. Uh, it will say, of course, uh, this person has purchased this through Shopify. And on Shopify, it will look like this, uh, where the blue one in the middle is yourself. Uh, other people are your friends. Uh, the blue boxes are the uh, products, and the houses are the web shops. This is just an, uh, a prototype of it. Uh, but this is how it will look like. 
<coughs> yeah, now for the market size and segments. And uh, on this chart, it's, or this uh, slide, it's more, the most important thing is the three last uh, <coughs> bullet points. And uh, what we can see here is the U European e-commerce will grow 12.2% annually through 2016. So every year until 2016, it will grow with 12.2%. 12, 12, uh, um, the same thing for, uh, for the US e-commerce will grow 10.1%. At the same time, um, uh, the, consu consumers, the uh, amount of consumers will increase as well. And what we see on the last two uh, circles here is that there's a lot, a lot of online consumers worldwide and a lot of users on Facebook. And we will use that as our like, segment. This is the, the area in between is like where we will uh, try to hit in the, in the beginning. Uh, this is, a, is our obstacles and barriers, the different phases we have to go through. Um, the first thing we need to work on is the business plan because that's what sells the idea. Uh, product development, we need funding for programming because we can't do it all by ourselves and so on. Um, and we want to fund the marketing, massive number of, of users, and then it will probably run by itself. Uh, the last slide is... Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're Okay. Yeah, first of all, I think it's, it's a cool idea, but maybe you should aim for making a widget for blogs instead, first of all, because it would be a super tool for all the fashion bloggers to have on the side of their blog. Then you would, you would be able to follow the latest purchases on, on all the, like on eBay, on or whatever you would be able to connect it to, because then they would be able to showcase the latest purchases both on their page and on the on the side, so, so sort of this is my wardrobe and so on and so forth. That's a very good idea. Um, that's actually not quite one of our ideas, but we've been thinking about uh, adding these uh, fashion bloggers into our system as like forerunners and front uh, users. In the back. Uh, so I purchased something, and it discounts. Uh, it involves me getting a uh, stuff on my wall that says I just bought this. What's there? Uh, to stop me from just deleting it when when I when I got the discount already, then yeah. I just got a free ten percent discount doing nothing. Yeah, there's there's really nothing we can do to to avoid that uh, right now, but um, we hope that people want to brag about their stuff, and this way we can spread the word about uh, Shopify um, and all the data about the people that we are going to. Uh, to sell to the retailers are saved in our database. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, why make it obvious? Why post something on the Facebook wall when you can make it subconscious? If uh, I know that that uh, I buy these things because I have a certain age, nationality, uh, I am connected to certain groups on Facebook, uh, and you have all kind of data on me. That's already out there. You know what I Google search uh, and something. And then Lars is sitting right there. He's connected to the same group, has the same age, the same gender, and probably has uh, the same fancy for sick gadgets. And why not just propose to him that he should buy this stuff uh, through kind of uh, a, a, a media? Because he probably will if he's uh, proposed with uh, stuff that he actually wants. So there is actually no need to to uh, advertise it if you just can make it uh, or advertise from me to others if you can just advertise uh, based on what I do to Glass. Um, that could be an extra feature, I guess, because the main idea is to spread the word about all products. So if, if I buy a t-shirt and I post it, everybody, on, uh, all my friends, 600 friends could be buying the same t-shirt instead of just adding it to one person. Because we can't always be sure that because you are in the same age, you have to buy the same shirt or the same size of shirt or something like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, but uh, the amount of parameters uh, available on people are actually enormous. So uh, in, in uh, the, the first question you got was, can I just delete the post, the advertisement from me to others? And uh, people will uh, get 
and somewhat annoyed if it's too obvious what they buy or what is published about their private life. So why not uh, avoid to, to uh, invade the, the private space of people like that? Um, I think it's the advertised part for the companies. Um, if we can tell the companies that their products will be spread on Facebook, uh, it will be a big benefit for them. Okay. Yeah. Should I go here? Uh, I know because we had kind of a game uh, on where I come. You know, you were supposed to share if you would like a free trip to I don't know where. And people got tired of having all these advertisements for, I don't know, a trip to our store. So do you, do you think it could be a problem so people would avoid it and block it or, you know, these advertisements? They it. it could be one of the potential problems for our idea, but uh, the, uh, we also aim to like, create our own network of users, maybe you could say bloggers or someone, people who are actually interested in this, mm. I don't know, uh, different shopping habits and different, I don't know, new trends, and uh, people who actually want to, uh, to see those information and make some, their own uh, decision about that. And also related to the previous question, uh, don't you think that this could be a, like an anti-advertisement? Because if I know that my friend has a t-shirt, probably I will not buy it because I will search for my individual. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, if you uh, maybe if your friend buy a new iPad, you would like to buy it. And <laughs> I don't know, it could be, uh, you can, I don't know. Yeah. Have you think have you think about uh, linking it or uh, working together with Trustpilot because they make surveys of the shopping experience at the shop. So in that way, you could give the consumers like two experiences. I bought this thing and I had a good or bad experience with the shop. Feedback. I, I did the purchase at. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. We we can take that as a comment if you like. In blogging now, you have a lot of people giving reviews about certain products, and uh, they can be biased because you have companies giving them free products or giving them discounts. So, how are you going to avoid that sort of thing with your product, where you know you, you want an honest product where people can say, "Oh, this is I trust my friend because of uh, what he said," but how do you know it's not going to be taken you know, in that direction like blogging? Uh, I don't think we need to avoid it um, because if you can't really avoid it, if, if like bloggers or famous people buy stuff. It's a big uh, advertisement for the companies. So I think that's just good for them. And just as long as they use it on our platform, it would be good. Okay, one last question from the floor. Yeah, just, uh, did you consider to team up with other companies? Maybe I was just thinking about some, you know, these uh, companies who already provide uh, discounts on purchases like downtown, something maybe they have a huge segment. And they can use their brand to uh, team up with. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need to uh, to speak with some companies and talk uh, about what is possible uh, in the matter of which kind of discounts they are able to give, uh, and maybe that's a way to uh, cooperate with other companies. That would be an easy way to do it. Okay, Jakob, have you got any questions? Uh, I think uh, a lot of the questions here are, you know, looking into user behavior and how will users react to this. And I think you have some really excellent market data. Uh, this is actually a field where there's market data available, so hooray for that. Um, but uh, what are you proposing to do uh, with regard to documenting the user's reaction to this? I know that you were considering some things. Could you just put a few words on that and, and how that relates to some of the comments we've had? Uh, from the audience here? Yeah, of course, some of the comments we had, uh, if people are willing to use it and link it on Facebook, and we are preparing a survey uh, to ask people if they want to use it and what they would want to use it. If discount is enough or we need to do something else to make people uh, want to use it. So a survey of, uh, for the users is our plan at the moment. Okay. Rena, would you like a question? You, you're permitted if you'd like. No, I think I'll save it for next time. Um, I, I was wondering whether it's um, 
whether you'll be allowed with Facebook to actually do this. I mean, I, I'm wondering whether Facebook is a completely open platform which allows you to integrate at your free will or you have to go in a strategic alliance with them. Um, have you looked into that at all? We, there's already the possibility, like you saw with the Nike shirt, to, uh, to link something to your wall. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's already existing, but I don't know if, like, if there's a lot of money in it, uh, if they want a part of it or something. Yeah. Uh, that could be an obstacle, okay. maybe. Um, while we're having one last question, can we have group 14 down to the front to uh, load up their presentation? Um, we can take one more question from the floor. Uh, I was uh, wondering, is it the Nike that pays, or is the shop which sells the product who pays? Good question. Where, where does the money come from? Um, I guess that uh, it depends on how we sort out our platform. If we go directly to the brands or we go uh, through like shops, like you said. Uh, if we contact like Nike, Adidas and stuff like that, of course it would be through them. Uh, but it's going to be hard to get all the brands in, but it's it would, quite easier it would. to get one shop, right? But that's, that's up to see what's possible for us and what's make what makes the most sense, uh, but both uh, possibilities, uh, for sure. Okay, um, just a quick comment on that. I think it's a, a really, really interesting and exciting proposition you have. Um, unlike the rest of them, I'd, I'd pick this one out because it's, it's clearly scalable. So you don't have to make such a um, precise market size. You can just show that as long as we can get the ball rolling, it will scale up. Um, so that's why I don't think the market data was so important. The implementation is a little bit more important in this and very challenging. Uh, but if we can thank the group. Um, you're welcome to ask a question at the end if you like. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, Three. just waiting for the rest of the group. Okay, three, two, one, oh, off you yes, go. Yes, we are ready. Uh, our idea is based on the uh, real experience out in the classroom. We have experience that uh, students have a hard time keeping uh, interested and entertained by blackboard education. So we have two perspectives. We have a social uh, perspective and we have an economical perspective. And that's why we care for the future uh, of the next generation. And uh, also we have discovered that there is a need. We are living in a society where government spent a lot of money on education. Uh, so there is a need for improved uh, competition uh, with other parts in the world. Uh, uh, sorry for us, uh, the PISA survey shows that actually we have declining grades. So if the government have a pain, we need to solve this pain. And we have a market. Uh, we know the Danish market for physical education alone is 12 million Danish kroner a year. Uh, that's on the budget. It's, p uh, it's money that's ready to pick up. And we know uh, all together in the Scandinavian countries we have around 60 million Danish kroner. So with this money, if they are there, they're ready. And if we look for the rest of the world, we have 2 billion Danish kroner a year spent on physics, education, books and materials. And we uh, decided to, uh, to divide this into different tiers. So we have tier, the Nordic tiers, and that's based on cultural, economic, uh, social state, uh, timing, and uh, geographical presence compared to Denmark. And the reason why we have the former British Commonwealth as tier four as the largest one, they all speak English, they all have wealthy parents, they all need their children to do well and we are pretty sure they will spend money on the best education tool in the world. And here we have a truly scalable business. It's computer-based, and the more money investors put into this, the more money they will get out, the faster. And we uh, calculated here, if we put 10 developers into this working for two years, we will have a break-even uh, around uh, 2015 based on very small market uh, uh, shares, 2% in the Nordic the first year, 8 in the Nordic the next year, 10 in North Europe, and 10 
for the rest of the world, and we will break even. And even two, 2016 is not necessary to break even. Yes. Um, for the next thing, what we want to try to achieve is create an interactive physics uh, physics material uh, with an open source. One of the things is that uh, children in general are divided into three groups, uh, audible, visual, and kinesthetic. Boys are, m are mainly kinesthetic and, uh, and audible, and therefore they actually lose some some concentration on the on the blackboard entertainment. And we sort of want to embrace this so they can play around with the uh, play around with it instead of having to sit and watch all day. We want it to, to be a sort of an open source knowledge sharing environment for the for the physics books, so we don't have to to acquire all the knowledge ourselves or pay authors to to uh, to collect it. Um, uh, this uh, our pro our project is supported by the the political initiatives of a, a three year plan where they want to uh, integrate IT applications, they want to enhance natural sciences education, and they want to be able to make digital examinations. Um, we are primarily looking at the first two uh, points. We want to combine current technologies open source ebooks and so forth into a user friendly uh, learning tool for natural sciences the key thing is that it's user friendly um, so that the ki the the kids can bring it home and you don't have to you don't need 800 consultants to teach people how to use it um, we need to find a good business model to uh, for the pricing and distribution and we need to meet the needs of both teachers and uh, and the purchasing centers um, yeah, and we want to create this, the formally said uh, knowledge sharing environment. Uh, what are bar barriers of uh, success? We need uh, funding for the first two years. We have resistance from old teachers who uh, will have a hard time um, understanding why they need this, or will they be will they have to compete with a computer program? We have the political as aspect, and then it's crucial that we're first movers because if somebody comes in with a lot of money, then they will probably muscle us out pretty fast. Uh, and then we need the, the high friendly, the high level of user friendliness and usability. And um, the final uh, slide is just that since we've begun the project, we've actually had a lot of articles. The first one is a kindergarten that's bought iPads for all the children, so we know they're sort of the technological level. We have that the Stanford uh, um, um, ex experiments that showed that boys need more interactive, interactive education, and then we have, okay. yeah. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. First question over there. You, you said you wanted to make it open source for everybody to, to log on so you don't have to have authors. How would you validate what people put into this uh, system? Um, yeah. Uh, the product is based on that um, you have a lot of articles who people uh, put up, uh, different subjects, and uh, each of them could be rated. And then if a teacher comes and says, I have to put together a, a, a term of uh, physics, they could take uh, each chapter and place in a certain order and teach their kids um, what they want. So actually, you're pulling down articles from, from different uh, places which have uh, been rated or you could follow a, um, a collection from a, a certain man who is, has uh, a valid for, for what he's saying uh, and follow an education that is based on a, a compilation of articles. The back. Are you going to uh, earn your money on this? Is this some kind of license or are you going to sell it and to yeah, it's a, it's a license. Today, uh, alone in Denmark, uh, the government uh, spends 400 kroner a year per student. A book costs 300 to 400 kroner. They need to replace the book every third year. So they have a budget. We just want to go in and take that budget. Uh, depending on the resistance from the teachers, we might uh, lower, the, lower the price in the start so that we both have the, the carrots that they like to work with this tool and we also have the economic uh, stick that they need to use this tool because the government will save money. Uh, I think it was from three months ago, uh, Apple have uh, I 
case, I think it's called e-learning system, where they have a program that they could give to the teachers, and then afterwards they could make a program and an app to make the learning process. What is your app different compared to that? We have a, we have a lot of, co um, of uh, competitors. We have a teacher tube, which uh, is a, a, a search bar for uh, lectures. We have, uh, we have Wikipedia. Uh, where you can find the knowledge uh, uh, at a correct level, you have uh, we have a, a, a Mac who has uh, or Apple who has made the iBook author, so you can compile uh, your own private files into a a, a lecture um, and and publish that. Uh, but all of these together uh, is based on either that you just upload a lot of uh, articles or that you have uh, private articles which are compiled into a section. So there's a, a large segment of uh, open source uh, knowledge out there, and there's a segment uh, or wiki spaces which is uh, to compile lectures or articles, but there's a, not a, a, a join between these two. And uh, most of this is, uh, is in, in not interactive uh, and not uh, um, added for, for the learning of the kids, but just as to put up what knowledge we have based on the technologies there already are. And, and the last comment is that the Apple tools at least are targeted specific at Apple uh, iPads and Apple stuff, so and I don't think the Danish government will log into Apple alone. Okay, the thing with the multi, uh, the, as you said, not only Apple. Um, in, in my uh, experience, if, if a computer or device can be used for anything else, then the educational purpose it will be used for anything else. Than that. <laughs> how, how are you going to manage this compared to a, a, a old school textbook? Well, the thing is that what we want to achieve is is a like a sort of a ebook 2.0. That that is actually better at at giving away knowledge than than just a PDF book, which is which sort of is the generic way to go around it now. We want that the kids can bring home and understand it at home and don't have to sit sit around. What what, what was my teacher saying? What happened at class? They can just go in, boot up a lecture, try a little game, and to remember and have some explanation. So so what we're trying to achieve is this this needs to be more user friendly, it needs to be more understandable, and this wants to teach people stuff. It's it's not sort of a uh, an encyclopedia where you can look up yeah. knowledge and then you have to sort of understand it. I've, I've, you sit there? I think the question was, correct me if I'm wrong, if you have this tablet, what's to stop them going on the internet and playing other games? As well, opposed to a textbook, you don't do that. You you only have the curricula. No, but yeah, okay. So, was that was that what your question was? Okay. The thing is that they already have the tablets and the computers with them at high school, okay. or that's the tendency. So whether they're using it for their textbook or for, or for playing around with apps, that's not something we can, we can sort of okay. stop. So that's the trend anyway. Yeah. Okay, um, and last question then. Uh, and just, just to get you completely down, you're, you're completely going to replace all the physical books, as you know in, in physics, they're all just going to be obsolete. Yeah. So that would be the goal. When they go to, let's say, they, they go to the lab and have some exercises, should they then also, should the computers be with tag along all the time? Well, we're going to make field studies and see if they're not already bringing their computers because it's a lot easier to fill out stuff in Excel already than it is to do in, on, in paper and then you will be absolutely sure you save it. So you don't have to bring a thousand papers home and remember what was what. So. So yes, we will need to, to, to check if this is already happening or if, if whether there's a tendency that it will happen in the future, which we sort of certain it will. Another thing is we actually, we actually plan to replace a lot of the lab work because you can simulate the same in the computer. So actually you, you could make the simulation and if you wanted to go to the lab, you could just test that the lab is doing the same as the computer. You, you say you're never going to use access any textbooks, so, so that way you avoid any copyright. copyright. Yeah. Okay. And, and, but, but could you imagine harnessing 
the people who would otherwise normally have written these textbooks? Could, could you imagine that they might contribute? Uh, I think since it's uh, open source, everybody is welcome to contribute. And that's why we also have uh, written here that we need to find, we, we think about this licensing uh, policy, but we might, I think actually we have been discussing to open up for that other people than ourselves can publish article in there and we can have a small fee and they can sell their, their work in our framework. So they can license their own knowledge. If somebody likes their chapter better than the chapter we have done, shouldn't, we shouldn't restrict it to only be used by our chapters. Yes, if they want to convert it into the same, what we want is interaction and to embrace all sorts of children and kids and students. Um, so if they are willing to, to convert their books into our platform in order to generate the same sort of high level of, of understanding and usability, then, then it would be perfect. Um, I think eventually we want them to, and, and it's also, it's, it would be a possibility to make a joint venture with, with, the, with the, the ones making the physics books, so they would actually be in on it. But then it would be hard to get, uh, get got pay, uh, money from the government because it would sort of be a mix, mixed of interest, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. <coughs> we have been discussing taking care of like, the needs of the teachers, and we have heard that teachers actually like to be able to shop each lesson so they don't like to buy a book because sometimes they need four books. So they actually like to buy their lessons. So we could divide our books up into like all the lessons and then they could purchase uh, the number they needed per year and then other could contribute into this framework. And then we could be a marketplace for all knowledge within physical education or all education, in fact. I think one of the underlying concerns of the question is that when you when you make this open source, you need to make sure that you don't put your your partners, which are the uh, curricular contributors, the people who write the textbooks and material, you don't put them out of business. You yeah. you bring them along with you. Make sure there's some value proposition for them as well, yeah. unless you can make them redundant and just rely on the community to um, to provide your content for you. Um, Jacob, do you have a last question? I think we're out of time. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, Sorry. I'll just uh, add something on afterwards. I have a few comments. Thank you very well, much. Um, again, I think we'll take a. Um, let's give it a little bit longer. We'll, we'll come back at quarter past. Um, after the break, we've got teams seven, six, and 12 presenting. So make sure your uh, content is on the laptop.